Right, ladies and gents, um, just occurred to me, I uh, mean, sewing up or kit making uh, vids are pretty popular and uh, requested. I've uh, obviously, for one of the guys doing the uh, the walk for the uh, Royal British Legion, uh, raising money, uh, asked me just could I do a, a Laplander pouch for him for his belt. Yeah, no worries, of course I can. Um, so I I'll, I'll, don't think I've done a, a, a simple um, flat belt pouch. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. So, ladies and gents, what I started with is a. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I'm in shot. Hang on. Is I've made a few of these before. It's just a. Uh, a template that's the exact size of one side so when I measure it off I do two of them and one of them because that's the lid so what you actually find at the end of it you've got that you'll see it's a little tad a smidge over but that's just for the me turnovers okay so that's how I got to that okay it's one um, long piece of material okay you'll measure it out to whatever item you want to put in the flat pouch and here we have like one of the little Friscar swords because I've been making myself a, um, a pouch for this. Um, but this is going to be this is size for a Laplander. Okay, ladies and gents, once you get that um, piece of material, obviously you're going to sew your ends over to make that a bit more robust along the top. Sew your Velcro on the front. This is going to be a Velcro closing pouch, and on the back, which is here, and that and that's the flap. This is the flap. Sorry, that's the flap. Um, 25 millimeter webbing, okay, um, and it's been robustly sewn down. So you've got a normal belt loop, and I always like to have a um, a low belt loop. So when your belt's through there, this pouch will move with you and not sort of be fighting against you. And when you sit down, you can just shove it backwards. So literally, you have to do that. Um, and again, as with everything, you sew everything on the outside, back and front, before you start putting it together. So ladies and gents, so it's inside out. I, when I now go in there. It's not terribly difficult to do, it's just getting the time to do it. It's mark up the depth of it, okay, inside out, all your bits are out of the way, and I'm going to sew round there and sew down there. And once I've done that, I'll bring you back. Right, ladies and gents, um, as I said, I've taken it away now, inside out. Hence, you always have to sew your loops on and your Velcro. No way you could get that on there now. And uh, all I've done is I marked the actual depth I wanted it to. Like I say, I'm, I'm showing you a physical saw. It is for a Laplander for the lad. Um, and sewed one set of stitching down there, one set of stitching down there. This is going to be a stress point, so I've overstitched it a couple of three times. That's just when you hit the reverse button, okay? I've gone over there two or three times. Now, all I need to do is turn it inside out, okay? Uh, that generally requires some um, swearing, um, for stress relief, so I'll bring you back once I've done that. Oh, apologies for the neighbour's dog uh, barking, ladies and gents. Um, so I'll just turn that inside out now, and hence you can see you have to sew your bits on on the outside. Now, uh, what I like to do is just, it's, it's going to get a little sore in it, just make them a little bit neat, and I just um, put a little bevel on the corner by just not pushing that through. Um, it means you've got less to sew through. Now, when you see there is that seam down there, I'm now going to go again using a simple stitch, no, not even a zigzag stitch, up there. I will then angle that and sew that up there and then fold that back in. And I shall do the same on the other side just to form the pouch, okay? Um, that makes a very, very strong join. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be sewing down. And on this side, sewing down there. Again, this is going to be a stress point, so I'm going to go over there two or three times, you know, you're hitting the back button, and then um, sewing on, as you can see, the, uh, let's see, you can see the, the yellow bit, the red bit there, yeah, just taking that bevel in, again, and doing a fold over there, so it's not going to take too long, I'll bring you back in a second. Right, ladies and gents, uh, doesn't take too long to do, um, as I said, I've started there, sewed up there, it's a normal stitch, and then I've gone down one side, just to form the actual flap that's going to come over, gone round and then come down. And like I say, I've gone over here two or three times just by hitting the back buttons for about, you know, like five, six centimetres and then come down. So in actual fact, without too much grief or aggravation, that's got like three lots of stitching down it. Done the other side and then again, as you can see, I've just formed that little pouch. So when it comes in, it's just a little bit, it's like, a, it's like an envelope, okay? The only thing I've got to do now is uh, match that to there 
and literally that's the pouch done so it's just getting the time to do things um, and having the right materials I had a bit of problem with the old brand material uh, not turning up and having to wait for that but the seller obviously uh, come true in the end uh, obviously that material was off eBay so uh, yeah bring it back in a few secs when I've actually finished this little pouch right ladies and gents uh, here we have the uh, finished article doesn't sort of uh, take too long and as I say um, ideal first sewing project there's nothing too complicated about this at all and save yourself a good sort of well these aren't made um, as far as I know um, and you can make this flat sheaf you know any, any size you wanted so you could have like a, um, a Laplander um, saw in there and a more knife if needed by just making it a bit wider so uh, here we've done taking you through the process um, I've sewed that piece of velcro on and what I did there because he's a good old boy I just thought about it there just put a little sort of uh, thumb grip just to, just to pull that up and as you'll see it's uh, only the uh, lapland is slightly bigger than that it does go in there it's not going to uh, clean the room in there don't make it too tight otherwise there's a pain getting in and out and uh, there you go and as I say there's the normal belt loop there and uh, I like to have it on there so I've given the guy options and you know as you're moving about and when you're sitting down this thing moves and sort of uh, doesn't sort of dig in into you but ladies and gents um, there we go a simple uh, Laplander sheaf should anybody want to make one and uh, hopefully that wasn't too long or too boring for people so uh, just um, one thing I'm gonna do I've got a lot of positive feedback and while I'm going to talk about feedback um, a lot of the time I can't uh, reply to you on YouTube videos some people I can some people I can't because it doesn't give me a reply button sometimes when I reply hit the reply button I then look back maybe a day later and the comment that I know I posted to that person just hasn't been saved and it's not up there so please take my apologies okay I will keep banging away at this um, until I can reply to everybody because if you take the comment to reply take the time to comment on one of my videos I, I personally think it's only good manners just to reply even if it's to ask questions or just say cheers mate appreciate your comments and watching my films so ladies and gents please bear with me on that right I'm going to move you forward a little bit now because on one of my videos uh, I just made up a few what I will call you now there's the one I've got on now there's no two two ways about it uh, a little neck lanyard and for me you know I'm a dirty smoker so I'm always fiddling around which pocket it, you know the lighters in and all that type of stuff so I've had one of these god knows it's got to be three years old now something like that um, and it's just sim quite simply ladies and gents a uh, a little slip for a little sort of disposable but refillable lighter two good ways um, even if you don't smoke always nice to have a light around your neck when it's really really cold these lighters ignitions all your mess and that all don't really want to work if you've got this round your neck ladies and gents and this is against your body and it ain't uncomfortable in any way or you know just in front of your t-shirt but underneath maybe you're sleeping a i don't know um, a snug pack jacket or something like that it's warm so when you get up in the morning it ain't, you ain't going to be doing all that because uh, you know the fuel inside's too cold and guess what it's always handy to have um, you know it could be everyday carry so I'm just going to take you so many people think oh what blimey what a good idea Mac I'm going to take you through how I make one so it's really really simple now again um, that's the finished size so I'm going to make sure I'm in shot here that's about right there so a lip over there and that's that lip there okay and then with that I'm going to measure the length of the lighter and then sew up there and sew up there ladies and gentlemen um, not indifferent as to how I did that pouch okay so I'm going to put a lip there sew it across judge the right size for the lighter which will be about there and simply sew up there and sew up there okay not across obviously because I want the lighter to go in there I'll bring you back when I've done that right ladies and gents here we are uh, I've finished that now um, as you can see it will take any lighter all sorts of light even a clipper um, so all I did there was sew that back over sew it up and down there and a little bit more down there I did that with a little zigzag stitch otherwise it was just normal stitching again an ideal first product um, first project if you're doing a bit of sewing um, and this is just normal 15 uh, millimeter or two inch seat belt material go on eBay 15 millimeter webbing comes up okay um, a little bit of colour coordination there in the fact that I've got some uh, paracord round here. Um, I think that's nice, the brand goes with the brown. 
um, I've done the two knots at the side there just make sure I'm in yeah I am okay so you can see them um, just about the right so I like mine just where my sternum is um, and it's out of the way but you've got the ability and uh, David uh, showed me how to do that just to put two different knots there uh, I'm not gonna um, sort of bore you with how you do it but should the person want to they can just adjust it so it's quite close to you so when you're leaning over it's not dangling down and it's always uh, kind of inside your jacket and generally what I like to do is just have that at the side even if you've pulled it straight that way it's there you could possibly hide it in between there if you wanted it to um, to make sure I'm in shot yeah that could be hidden inside that loop if you wanted to and there you go ladies and gentlemen you slip your lighter in there it's kept next to your body you've always got one uh, we all need the ability to make fire uh, okay some may see that as non bushcrafty but you know if you're cold wet and you've just gone through a river or something's happened you're drenched you want to get a fire going <coughs> mr propane and the lighter is your best bet anyway ladies and gents um there's another little variation on this and uh, i'll show you here now um mine is sewn in okay just make sure I'm in shot again okay now on here I'll just push the actual uh, bit of cord through there and I've properly sewn it there so it's really robust but anything going around your neck okay see here I've pushed it through but this isn't sewn as well and I guarantee you if I give that a good yank ladies and gents I need to give it a yank as well it will come free it will break it's designed to break away if needed and it's always a good idea to have anything like that uh, when around your neck okay so there's max one I've had that for years there's uh, another one can't send lighters through the post, especially only cop coppers anyway, so uh, I can't, this gentleman here, um, obviously when I was at the old um, sh Camp Shaky meet, walked up to me and uh, David Fears and gave us a, you know, a cracking little 511 pouch, always like to do something in re return ladies and gents, um, he's indicated, I told him, anything you see you want, job done, uh, so I'll stick that in there as a little extra prezi, uh, everybody could do with having a lighter on them at all times, so ladies and gents, there's a, uh, a couple of little projects for you there and as I say um, I do get asked to sort of show how I make stuff um, you know uh, the wonderful feedback is that the other day I watched uh, Rob McKenzie uh, he's got new one of these Kindles couldn't really find the patch they're 15 16 18 quid so guess what you got some black material he's watched a couple of films he's got a machine um, he did spend a day down here with me and we you know showing him how to use a sewing machine and he built himself a cracking cracking pouch that you can't get uh, like this stuff nothing i'm making here i'm not robbing anybody or you know stopping anybody's income because it's all best folk uh, made to design he made himself a cracking old um, pouch for his uh, kindle so ladies and gents are trying to keep it a bit short but um, you know like a, a lady's skirt long enough to cover the object but short enough to arouse interest. So ladies and gents I thank you very much for your time and I uh, take care to everybody.